Hey, it's John with CruiseFever.net. I want to give you a video tour of Allure of the Seas, Royal Caribbean's largest ship, the largest cruise ship in the world right now until Harmony of the Seas comes out in spring of 2016. So I want to start out as usual with the pool deck. The ship uh, debuted in 2010 on its maiden voyage. Uh, so it's been out a few years, but it is a beautiful ship. I want to start off as usual showing you the pool deck. There are four main pools, but they're kind of broken up in this area, as you can see. So it's really nice how they have it spread out. There's a few hot tubs in this area as well. And you can see how the loungers are kind of spread out across the pool deck. The ship does hold, uh, has a guest capacity of about 6,500 guests, double occupancy is about 5,500. Uh, but because the ship is so big, it does kind of spread them out. Here you see the two different sections divided by this bridge. You have Central Park below, and then on the left you have the kiddie pool area, and on the right uh, that pool is a sports pool, and there's another hot tub in that area. And there you see Central Park we'll look at in just a minute. And this is the sports pool that we just saw earlier. And I really enjoy the cantilevered whirlpools on each side of the ship. They're really large, so you're not right up next to someone, and they have great views. Um, as they hang out over the side of the ship, like I said, one on each side there. And this is right outside the solarium, and here we have inside the solarium another two whirlpools there, and there's a pool in the middle with these fountains. Beautiful area. Uh, it's 16 years or older in this area, but you can see just how big it is. Again, the ship is 225 feet wide, and the solarium takes up that entire width, so we have plenty of room to get some sun. Uh, there's two levels to the solarium. So a great place to get some sun. Even if it's raining, some of these panels kind of block out some of the rain as well. You can just see how nice of a relaxing place this is. One of my favorite parts of the ship is the solarium. But if you go down one deck and go all the way forward, you'll see this little wing and this bridge part of the ship where you can walk out on it and get great views like this from the side of the ship. Here we are at Atlantis and there's some binoculars there that you can uh, really get right up on some of these landmarks and check them out. So Here we have the lower half of the solarium, some of the fountains there kind of drowned out some of the noise, which is nice. And this is the second level of the solarium. A little bit of a cloudy day here, but gives you an idea of uh, what it looks like, and it's a little more quiet up in this area as well. Right in the middle of the solarium is the Samba Grill, which is a Brazilian restaurant at night. Here you have it here, but during the day, it's a buffet. It's complimentary a buffet, so you don't have to go far from the solarium to get a, a bite to eat. All right, now we're going to go all the way aft of the ship and check out uh, the flow rider, check out the whole sports court area. But there's a flow rider on each side of the ship. So on sea days, they'll open both of them, so the lines won't be that long. They're pretty short. This was just a two-night cruise we went on to Nassau, and the lines weren't that bad at all. Doesn't matter if you're a pro or if you're an amateur, um, there's a little something for every putty at Flow Rider. So it's fun to watch. It's fun to try. Right in front of that, we have the nine-hole golf course. Really nice decor. And then that's right next to this big expanse looking over the boardwalk, which we'll look at later on. But right behind the golf course, you have a few ping-pong tables on either side of the ship. And right behind that is Wipeout Cafe. Again, another kind of a smaller little buffet area for lunch, so you don't have to walk all the way to uh, Windjammers if you want to get some pizza or some hot dogs. And there's also these Coke machines that have like 50 different kinds of Coke. You just have to get that special um, bottle and then you get Coke the whole trip, all kinds of Cokes and sodas. So here's a good size arcade on the lower of the seas. It's a big ship so they need plenty of room.
All right, so we have the full-size basketball court all netted in, so we don't have to worry about the basketball uh, falling outside the court. A really nice setup with this court. And just there in the middle of the expanse, we have the zip line, which is really popular. Uh, you can see the line on the right in the top of the screen there. kind of see people zip lining from this location. This is right at the boardwalk. Uh, but we're going to turn around and take a look at Aqua Theater, which is like an iconic part of Oasis, Oasis class ships. Uh, we have the two rock climbing walls on each side and plenty of seating there below for the Aqua Theater shows. But during the day, they'll do a few events as well. Here we have King Julian. And uh, we have some characters from Shrek. And they are kind of walking around the boardwalk at night, too, so the kids love to kind of meet the characters and everything. So I wasn't able to video uh, Ocean Aria, the Aqua Theater show, uh, because of copyright reasons. But I got a few pictures of it so you can get an idea of what it's like. Really entertaining, really well done with the music, the choreography. Um, so much talent uh, with the people involved in these shows. So it's experienced like no other, and it's amazing how high they're actually jumping um, to get into this water. So a lot of fun. You have to get reservations. Um, you could get in without them, um, but if it's filled up, then you can't. So you might as well just get a reservation and uh, get there a little bit early so you can get a good seat. Here we have a close-up of the rock climbing walls, which are massive, especially for uh, being on a cruise ship. All right, and right behind Aqua Theater we have a couple shuffleboard courts and right below that in this area there's a jogging track so it's a big ship so it's uh, plenty of room to, to jog around down there of course the boardwalk comes alive at night it's a cool place to be it kind of has a Coney Island type of feel as you walk around with places to get pizza or hot dogs or um, a burger I go on the carousel so we're just going to kind of walk through the boardwalk area and all the different places along it. The doghouse has all kinds of hot dogs and sausages. This is all uh, complimentary. And there's donuts available in the mornings. Cups and Scoops is right next to that. Ben and Jerry's ice cream does have an extra fee, uh, but it's really good ice cream and it's very convenient being on the boardwalk place for kids to make their own pet. And there's also another arcade. I showed you the uh, the larger arcade. There's a smaller arcade right here. And uh, there's Zoltar, so you can get your future taken care of as well while you're there. A couple little shops along the way. And of course the carousel is very popular with kids and adults alike. And uh, there's always a candy shop, so you can Get the kids all hyper. Don't worry, there's plenty of places for them to get rid of that energy on the ship. And the iconic Johnny Rockets is available. I think it's $6.95 per person to eat there, which includes getting anything you want on the menu. Pretty. Saber is an a la carte specialty Mexican restaurant. And there we have a little kid's playhouse and a uh, bar right there in the middle of the boardwalk. All right, so we're moving up to Dazzles, which offers uh, great views of the boardwalk. It's a three-story lounge that's kind of quiet during the day, and there's music and dancing at night. And now we're going to take a look at Central Park, which we kind of saw earlier. Really neat aspect of Oasis-class ships. All the plants and the vegetation here in Central Park are real. I love somebody water it every day. Uh, you hear the sound of crickets and everything. Um, that's play through speakers but it does give it a kind of a neat vibe as you're walking through there especially at night here's the wall garden which is really filled in nicely in the last few years uh, plenty of places to sit and relax you got benches and seats throughout Central Park if you just want to take it easy drink some coffee and enjoy the day all right we're gonna look at some of the restaurants uh, around Central Park here's Chops Grill 
This is a great place to get a steak. The cost is $39 per person. You can see there's an outside eating area there so you can enjoy the views of Central Park. 150 Central Park uh, offers fine dining as well. It's $40 per person to eat there. And Giovanni's Table offers uh, fine or family style Italian dining. You can hear the Italian music playing in the background. And the cost is $25 per person to eat there. Park Cafe is one of the best kept secrets, really, of uh, Central Park. It's a place to get, you can get sandwiches, fruit, a salad, uh, cookies. So you could have lunch there instead of going to the, the buffet and wind jammers. Uh, just walk through here and get something to eat. Enjoy Central Park a little bit. Vintages uh, has a la carte pricing, and it's open till 1 a.m. Here's a couple shots of the outside and then the inside as well. Love walking through Central Park at nighttime. All the lights come on. Uh, you can see some of the lights here. We actually have a, um, a balcony facing Central Park. Well, that'll be at the end of the video. You'll be able to see our stateroom there. So I want to show some of the decor uh, going up and down the elevators. We're going to go down now to the promenade. This is on deck five, and Schooner Bar actually is on deck six looking over the promenade. So I want to show some of that. They have uh, live piano music. And just below Schooner Bar is guest services. And this is actually where most of you will probably enter the ship, right around this area. Rising Tide Bar is right there. It kind of floats up and down uh, every half hour. You'll see it moving there. It'll go from one deck to the next, so kind of a cool place to hang out. And this is Cafe Promenade, where you can get some snacks, some pastries, which are all complimentary. Um, or you can get a uh, coffee, specialty coffee in the back there. They use Seattle's best coffee, as you see in this shot. There's also some complimentary coffee. If you just want a regular coffee, you can get that on the side. Or if you prefer Starbucks, uh, there's a Starbucks on the ship as well. So many of you will be happy to see that. You do pay extra for this, just so you know. And just want to show some of the shops, uh, jewelry shops and uh, watches and regular gift shops. And they also have uh, stores like Guess and Michael Kors, and there's also a Kate Spade on the promenade as well. Bow and Stern is the English pub on board on Oasis of the Seas. I believe it's called Globe and Atlas. And here's some of the uh, inside of Bow and Stern. And many of you that are familiar with Royal Caribbean are familiar with Sorrento's, a place to get pizza uh, pretty much any time of the day, go right in there. And they have a couple of these Coke machines right outside Sorrento's as well. On air is one of the lounges where you'll have uh, some karaoke throughout the week. There's also multiple TV screens in there. Uh, sometimes you'll see a ball game going on. In Boleros is a Latin dance club. You see a lot of dancing when you go by here at night, especially. And we're going to move down uh, one more deck to the entertainment place. Here you see the art gallery. They had an auction that day. So not everything was open, but um, earlier I got a few shots of uh, Blaze, actually where we had our mustard drill on Blaze, the dance floor there, and uh, you see the rest of the lounge. And right across from Blaze, you'll see the Comedy Live area. It's not a huge room, so if you want to go to the show, you, you want to get reservations. And uh, sometimes they'll have it in Studio B as well. Uh, Studio B's normally an ice skating rink, and there's ice shows. Uh, went to one that's pretty cool. It's called Ice Games, featuring Monopoly. So I wasn't able to get video of this either, uh, but I was able to get a few pictures to give you an idea of, of what the show was like. But it was pretty entertaining, a lot of fun. It's just 
amazing having an ice skating rink on a cruise ship and they're doing you know triple lutzes i don't know all the names but they're doing some amazing things uh, on a moving ship so that's pretty impressive but uh pretty cool very well choreographed all right we're gonna check out casino royale the casino is divided up into two halves one that's for smoking and one that is non-smoking And here we have the lovely Amber Theater on Allure of the Seas. Uh, you need to make sure you have reservations for the shows. They were showing uh, the Broadway musical Mamma Mia while we were there, the two-night cruise. Royal Caribbean will also be showing Chicago and Blue Planet at Amber Theater. All right, we're going to check out some of the main dining rooms. We're going to go through uh, three of them here. Here's Silk. You have the option for anytime dining on Royal Caribbean, or my time dining, I should say, um, or early dinners at 6.15, late dinners at 8.30. Um, but even if you do the my time dining, um, it's preferable that you set a time earlier in that day with your maitre d' so you don't have to wait as long when you go to the dining room. Izumi offers hibachi and sushi in the same restaurant. See, this side here is for uh, hibachi, and on the other side, they have sushi. And this is a la carte pricing, so it all depends on what you order as to what you pay. And this is located on deck four. All right, we'll check out the Windjammer Marketplace. This is the buffet. And for a ship this big, with potentially up to 6,500 guests, usually about 5,500, I thought it'd be a lot crowded, but they did a good job spreading out different food options throughout the ship, so it really wasn't that bad at all. So we'll give you a little tour of the buffet and the seating area. Again, there's two more of those Coke machines. Some of the dessert options. And this is always my favorite part, but in the very back there of Windjammer, you get a great view of the boardwalk and aqua theater down there and uh, see what's going on in the golf course or uh, other parts of the ship. Here we have Vitality Spa Cafe where you can get a smoothie or a nutritious drink right there. And We're going to check out the spa and fitness center. The spa is open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and the fitness center is open from 6 a.m. until uh, 1 a.m. just after midnight. So here we have the spa. This is the relaxation room where you wait before your treatment. And here we have the uh, thermal suite with uh, several different saunas around those heated loungers. And uh, one of the rooms for the couple's treatment as well. And this is a typical room uh, where you would get a massage or other treatment. And the staircase going up and down from the spa area to the uh, reception desk. I'm going to finish this video with a video tour of my stateroom. This is on deck 10, room number 187, and it's a balcony room that overlooks Central Park.
So thanks for watching this video. I'm just going to end it with just a few pictures of a Lord of the Seas uh, looking around the ship. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get more videos like this. Uh, thumbs up if you like the video. Leave a comment and make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, all those other places if you're on them. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good day.